Hello everyone, welcome back to another IB Chemistry SLHL video and today we're doing topic 3.1.1 as well as 3.1.2 which all has to do with the periodic table. So let's get straight into it. So here we have the periodic table which is given to us in the data booklet which means this is something that you will have access to in the exam room. So the first thing that we need to know is to identify the positions of metals, metalloids and non-metals in the periodic table. So the first important line to draw is this line over here. And this points out to us the transition metals and these elements they are called transition metals because they show properties of both metal and non-metal elements so any elements touching this line may present elements or properties of both all of these to the left of our line will be our metals. We can see tin, we can see copper, nickel, zinc, and all those elements. And to the right is where we'll have our non-metals with carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, so on, so forth. Now, in terms of reading a periodic table and using its information to deduce electron configuration, well, First of all, our vertical columns, we call these groups. Now, what a group tells us is how many electrons are in the element's outer shell, so how many valence electrons it has. For example, helium, since it's in group 1, we know that it will have one valence electron or one electron in its outermost shell. Now, what our periods tell us, these rows over here, our periods tell us how many shells an atom has. So, for example, cesium over here is in group 6. It's hard to see, but it says 6 there which means that cesium will have one, two, three, four, five, six outer shells. Now let's just erase some of this so that we can actually see what we are writing down. Another important thing that the periodic table can show us is what sublevel we are filling in in terms of S, P, D, and F. So, these elements over here fall under the S sublevel. These elements over here fall under the P D sublevel. Here we have our D sublevel, our P sublevel, and then finally we have our lanthanoids and our actinoids, which are the only elements on the periodic table which have electrons in. F orbitals. Based on this information that I have just given, we will need to, a skill that we need is to know how to apply this information when it comes to reading the periodic table to deduce the electron configuration of an atom up to 36, so krypton. And there are different 
classifications of different groups of elements on the periodic table, which we should also be aware of. To erase this so we can better see. So as I stated initially, we have our transition metals over here by this line. Group 18, we have what we call our noble gases. Noble gases. And these are elements which have a full outer shell. So we have helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon. Not sure what that is, and I'm also not sure what that is. A property of noble gases, since they have a full valence shell, is that they tend to be very stable. So they tend to have very high melting and boiling points. And this is oftentimes when you see your transitions of state, for example, well, you, where you will see sublimation and deposition going straight from solid to gas or vice versa. Similarly, in your halogens, you will also see this kind of stability because they are only missing one electron from their outer shell to achieve a full shell. And finally, all the way to our left, we have group one, which are our alkali metals. Now, that is all you need to know for structure 3.1.1 and 3.1.2. Hope this was helpful and that you've enjoyed.